This graphics card right here is the RX 7900 GRE, which in a recent review that we did on this card, I said that it was one of the best value GPUs out there at the moment. And after today's video, I'm still going to stand by everything that was said in that review, except something that has changed since when I did that review is that AMD have now unlocked the memory speed limits on this card. And I thought this would change my recommendation from good to great, but after testing it out, there's definitely much more to the story than just better speeds on the memory. Let's get into it right after today's video sponsor. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SED Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon BFTYC. Links in description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes yeah City, and we got another RX 7900 GRE right here. Because in today's video, I tested out two of the different samples that I had here just to give you guys a more accurate picture on what is going on exactly with the RX 7900 GRE and in particular its memory and its memory bandwidth. Now these limits pretty much unlock them to wherever they're going to crash at. And in this case, I found the max memory speeds I could get stable on both these cards. They were roughly around the same level, was 2,450 megahertz and 2,460 megahertz, which equates to around 19.6 gigabits per second. This was roughly the max stable uh, clocks that I could get on both these GPUs. So they're very similar in performance. Now the memory speeds can go a little bit higher than that, especially on the desktop and in Unigine in heaven, but I always want to make sure that the maximum speeds I'm dialing in on overclocks works across the board on all the games I'm testing. So these are the maximum speeds. And if we're doing a comparison, especially between Nvidia cards, it's only fair to then take the Nvidia cards to around where they can be max stable across all the games. And in this case, we're going from 18 gigabits per second to around 19.6 gigabits per second on the RX 7900 GRE. Then on the Nvidia side, we're going from around 21 gigabits per second memory bandwidth transfer speeds to 23 gigabits per second. So actually the Nvidia card in nominal terms gains even more speed than the AMD. Though let's start off with the best first, and this comes from Hogwarts Legacy with roughly a four to five percent gain. And I know what you're thinking right now, because I was thinking the same thing when I was benchmarking all these games. I was hoping, okay, this is just one of the middle of the road titles. We're going to get that 10%. And unfortunately, as I said just before this game, this is the best result first. It only gets worse from here. And moving on to Spider-Man Miles Morales, we start to see a 3 to 4% gain at both 1080p and 1440p. Then on to Robocop, it starts to deteriorate to around 3%. And then Alan Wake 2, where it's roughly a 1 to 2 percentage gain in terms of the FPS gain, both at 1080p and 1440p. Then the last title here, Baldur's Gate 3, this is when we're testing for raw rasterization. We're seeing here that it does okay, and then the NVIDIA card doesn't really do that well, because I believe that with its 192 bit bus in this particular test that we're doing is just the limiting factor here. So at this stage, what's the go here? You're thinking, why are we getting more performance? Maybe it's going to do better in ray tracing, but unfortunately it doesn't do better in ray tracing, at least across the two titles that I tested here on Alan Wake 2 and also Hogwarts Legacy. And then we go over to the power consumption. I guess this is some of the best news is that when you up the memory speeds, you're going to get that 3% roughly overall performance boost for really using not a whole lot extra percentage in terms of what's from the wall. So I guess in terms of efficiency, it's good value to up your memory speeds on both the AMD GPU and the Nvidia GPU as well. Then that now leaves us with a big elephant in the room that needs to be addressed. And that is with the RX 7900 GRE, why is it when we up the memory speeds by 10%, we don't get an extra 10% performance? And this is actually, a few viewers said this in the previous video that we did. They said that the 256 bit bus, the memory bus on the card, was the limiting factor. And I do believe this is the case after seeing these numbers here today. We we're seeing a roughly 1% to 4% gain depending on the title across the board here at 1080p and 1440p. So as I see it right here, the memory speeds, even though they're slower than the 7800 XT, the 7900 XT and the 7900 XTX, it's actually not really the limiting factor here 
on the GPU as opposed to the actual 256 bit bus that they've installed, which is the same as the RX 7800 XT. So with the RX 7900 GRE, you're pretty much getting a one and done GPU. Out of the box, it's really not going to get a whole lot better, but that out of the box card is still the best value GPU out there from AMD's camp with the RX 7000 series. Though when it comes to the RTX 4070, you can also apply that same memory overclock and get pretty much the same gains. So there's pretty much a moot point here. I just came under the assumption that perhaps the memory speeds were the limiting factor and also they were putting better memory that they deliberately limited when in fact I was wrong in my review with those assumptions and it turned out to be that the actual 256 bit bus is where the limiting factor is so I guess installing cheaper memory modules that are slower than say the 7800 XT and also the 7900 XT and XTX makes sense for this model. Though the last question you may have on your mind too is what if I go out and buy from a different vendor like Gigabyte or MSI, are they going to put better memory modules on there? And the short answer is no. They're all pretty much buying the same memory modules and packaging them on the GPUs. And there's pretty much no give or take there. They may have a choice between two different modules, but in terms of the speeds, they're always generally the same unless there's a revision or there's an update from AMD or in the case of Nvidia cards, Nvidia themselves. They're wrapping everything up with the RX 7900 GRE, still a good value card, could be better if the memory speeds were unlocked from the get-go and the memory was the limiting factor, but that wasn't to be the case. This is pretty much just a one and done card. You go out and buy it, pop it in your PC and you're going to get good performance. But what came out of this review for me personally is that I would just go out and buy the cheapest model possible with decent cooling. Make sure the manufacturer hasn't skimped on the cooling too hard, but go out and look for the best value. Don't really go out and pay for the Ultra Megatron model that might have Optimus Prime cooling solution on there because it's, you're just going to get no extra performance and you're going to be wasting your money as opposed to something like the two cards that we tested here today when i check the prices of the azrock steel legend if you like the white aesthetic that's going for a decent price and same with the sapphire pulse that we also tested here today but in terms of the memory speeds on both of them very similar amd also have an auto overclock vram feature available in their Wattman software. So you can utilize that if you just want to gain that extra roughly 2% performance and forget about it and you shouldn't have any instability issues either. Anyway, guys, with all that out of the way, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also, let us know in the comment section below what you think about now the memory unlock speed on the RX 7900 GRE. I think because AMD is putting inferior VRAM in there to begin with, it didn't end up making that much of a difference. And of course, that 256 bit bus was actually, I believe, the limiting factor in the end. Though, of course, love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And also, one final thing is if you're seeing uh, higher memory speeds out there, like people saying they're getting 21 gigabits per second, I would love to know how they're doing this and with some footage and them showing those memory speeds in the game because unless they've got an engineering sample, it's pretty much next to impossible on retail RX 7900 GREs. Anyhow, hope that answers that question and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. If you made it this far, then you know what to do and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.